Thanks for having me on. I'm Zach Cataldo. I'm on the Now You Know channel on YouTube, so I guess you'd call me a YouTuber. Love it. What's it like being like the CEO of your own venture? You know, it's so cool because it started I, for like the right reasons, right? So we uh, got a 2016 Model X, and uh, we heard that you could drive across country and charge it on superchargers. We being who? Me and my son. And uh, before that, we we just hopped in it one day and we we're like, let's just drive around our state. And we drove to places we'd never driven before. We drove down to Provincetown, which is that little out at the end of the the Cape Cod there. I'd never been there. My whole life I lived in the state. I'd never been there. Why? Because driving a car to <laughs> me and burning gas to get there just mm -hmm. felt like I, I only want to go if I have to. Mm. Then we hop in a Tesla and it's like, I want to go because it's fun. Nice. And so after we got back from the Cape, we're like, where else can we go in a Tesla? And we looked online. We're like, I think you can technically drive across the country. So we started YouTubing every day and just drove across the country. So you came into this with some sort of video audio, and I mean, knowing, just having talked for probably an hour before we were old, you know, this is kind of our whole world, and you were surprisingly apt with all of it. So did you come in knowing that, or you just start with the phone? We, so I own a recording studio, and uh, one it's of- It's like an onion, just layers <laughs> I know, I know, to just, it. <laughs> right, and uh, we had interns for years. We'd bring in interns, you wanna pay it forward, right? So we'd had kids, and uh, the kids would come in and I wanted to put them on projects. And one day I was like, you know, this YouTube thing is pretty cool, kids. What do you think about this? Uh, and I was like, what if we had a YouTube channel? And so we started making videos about like how to tune your guitar and stuff like that. And um, soon after that, it just kind of just kept gnawing at me like this is really cool. For my whole life in bands, you couldn't get people to hear your music unless you got them to a show. And now there's this thing where you can broadcast from your house if you want to with the iPhone. So we were like, let's just bring bands into the studio and put them on YouTube. So we did that for weeks and months and we'd put GoPros on the ends of bass guitars and in kick drums and we made fun videos and we did uh, all sorts of games with the bands like uh, spin a wheel and if the wheel lands on band murder, we kill you. <laughs> uh, all sorts of fun stuff. So uh, that was great and that YouTube channel didn't really do much. Not many people watched it. I thought it was a brilliant idea because I thought the bands will have their own fans and they will watch the videos and it'll just grow exponentially. So that was the first idea of like infinite scale of replicate, like right. free, in one viewer, a million viewers, same price right. for you. Yeah, it's right. as soon as you start realizing life in that, because creating music was my first way into video mm -hmm. or audio engineering. Obviously I didn't record drums because holy cow, that's confusing. <laughs> right. It's phenomenally deep how far you can go in terms of just like, whoa, sound is an interesting thing and then here we are recording each other's voices and I just want to yeah. make you sound the best that you can be. Obviously you have an angelic voice as is, but um, you know, so what, what's been your favorite part of this journey getting to where you are now starting from there? Was it just literally being in the vehicle with your son driving or was it, you know, the editing, you know, what, what have yeah. you enjoyed about this process? I enjoyed the community that has sprung up around it. So like when we did this trip, we would broadcast every day and we'd send the video back to our editors to put up on YouTube. And it was the first time that like, hey, we got 50 subscribers today. Hey, we got 50 more. By the time we returned from the trip, we had like 500 subscribers. What and was for, the biggest thing? Like Reddit or like, like what, what added to it? Like how, do you, how do you get you videoing you and your son to 50 people? Oh, just put it on YouTube. Wow. But something about a guy driving across country in a car, I guess, you know, in, a, in an electric car caught people. The you know? algorithm loved it. <laughs> I, I mean, exactly, right, exactly. I mean, you know, we live and die by the algorithm. Yes. <laughs> um, when we didn't even understand the algorithm at the time. But... So we're like, okay, this is better than the other videos we've been doing on making banana ice cream and <laughs> vermicomposting. So let's keep doing this. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it started to take off. And when we got back from that trip, I said, okay, so we can't keep road tripping forever. Forever. <laughs> uh, what should we do? And we're like, well, when we were at a supercharger one time, there's people talking about Tesla time. So when you charge at a supercharger, you get out, you're charging for 20 minutes and other uh, people get out of their cars and you're like, hey, did you hear about Elon Musk? What you did this week? <laughs> and I heard someone call it Tesla time. Hmm. And I'm like, let's have a show called Tesla time news and we'll just talk about what happens with Tesla every week. Yeah. And so we sat in the car for the first couple of years, I think, and we would just every week would do Tesla time news. That's fascinating. Yeah. Have you ever done it by just kind of I always make jokes about uh, just stick a 360 camera on Mark's head and that's its own show. Yeah. Um, but like almost something like that, you just walk around with that if it had really good audio. I'm trying to come up with an application for the 360 camera aside from some ad footage. We love using the 360 camera. We're using it today when we're on it. Like, cause I love you just put it on a selfie stick and you've yes. got like a drone shot yeah. built in. Yeah. It's the best. It's a great camera. So part of this, um, you know, I knew you were coming on a couple hours ago, but like I chose not to watch a ton of your videos cause I'm like, 
Now, if I know too much well, about they're you. Well, an hour long, so you only Oof. would have gotten through two. So. Oh, yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> and But you are at the place where you, I believe I saw the number 300,000 subscribers. So what does that mean coming from 50 people a day to right. now 50 might be a slow day? You know, like, right. what is it like being kind of the center of that pantheon? It's fun and it's an honor. Like, I feel like we know that roughly 100,000 people watch our show every week and we have people tell us like, I love Tuesdays. <laughs> um, so I re we really try hard to make it a good show because we know that people are going to spend an hour with us. And it means that um, when we go places and people like, that's Zach and Jesse, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. And it's also amazing because it means that I can get to talk to people like Mark because now we have enough viewers that they're like, oh, that's someone worth talking to. So now we have another channel called Disruptive Investing where we call up CEOs and say, let's talk to you. And that's, it's just amazing. Um, no longer are we shackled by media companies telling us who to watch and here's your 22 minutes with commercials to watch, right? We have Joe Rogan, we have, you know, Galley, we have whoever you want to watch. It's incredible and i guess because i'm the age i'm at i think it's incredible i don't know if you think it's incredible because you're younger than me and like this probably just was your world but to me there was this point where there was no youtube and then there was a point where there was and i just i'm still blown away that it's available for me it got worse we had the point where there was youtube with no ads and now there's youtube with ads so we we came in at the high the peak right. the plateau look and it's kind it's of it's worth ten dollars a month oh it's funny. it's i'm sorry it's worth it i'll do it i mean i know ads just suck <laughs> Mm -hmm. That doesn't does that not take money out of your pocket as someone who would have ads running on your video like you know if someone yeah. has YouTube well so that's the thing um, yeah if you you know you're, a few years ago YouTube was very lucrative right a lot of YouTubers are making a lot of money right and then YouTube has just been cutting cutting cutting, cutting. I had not heard that they were adding like two unskippable videos I thought people were making more money because there's more unskippable videos like two in a row I'm like Oof. nope it's going down so um, wild. if we didn't have a couple other revenue streams we couldn't be doing what we're doing we have a patreon so we have over five thousand people which is just absolutely incredible and that and you give them like an extra little bonus clip or yeah, something. yeah we have all sorts of cool perks that we give them um, we make bonus videos every week just for them um and so for like as little as a buck a month you can get all that stuff do you have a video to increase it seems like that in its own would be so much extra workload to be like oh i gotta get this for these people I'm like, it is that yeah it's, it's extra work but because they are our patrons like they like they are i mean they can go away right but they're not like youtube they're they're pretty steady um that's been just huge for us because and then it's also it makes you want to do your job because you're like i have five thousand people they're paying me to do this job yeah i'm not gonna let them down this week you know and when you do it every week there's weeks where you want to just phone it in yeah i could imagine so it's been 300 weeks or yeah Mark's we're coming number? up on the show 312 which would be six years straight you didn't take a break for like a month here and there? <laughs> uh, we The show did not stop. There was a couple wow. weeks. Um, like when I went to Spain recently, we did the sh I was in Spain, Jesse was in Boston, and we still pieced it together. Uh, so we've not stopped. Wow. Yeah. That's astronomical. It's kind of insane. <laughs> you just uh, put the 360 camera up in your bedroom. It's Tesla. <laughs> just <a> Tesla <laughs> talk with yourself some days. Um, yeah. And so are you at a place where you could hype? I mean, Galley's like tweeted that Elon, he's reached back. I mean, hypothetically, Elon does kind of like reply to people. Have you had any interactions with him or do you not really care about that? Like, wh yeah, what do you that, think about that? I, that's a big one for us. We know that, tw you know, Twitter is obviously the place he's at. We do have a, a Twitter. I don't tweet much. Um, it's, I'm into long form and it's very hard for me to put my thoughts together into a few characters. Like, and it's a lot of work and like the people who do it well, hats off to them. That's, that's amazing. We're so busy doing what we do that like, I just, I don't know. The other thing is, People have said, like, would you like to interview Elon? And I would, but I wouldn't want to broadcast it, to be honest. Like, I've thought about it long and hard. I'd actually just want to have dinner with him or just talk to him privately. But, um, it, yeah, the things I want to talk about with him, I don't think I'd want to talk about pu publicly. So there are different things than you, because you did publish Mark's conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's so like when you when you go into the, I mean, I, it's funny. I was sitting right where Kenzie is, and Mark was sitting where you are. It's with a different green screen. Mm -hmm. I was there for that whole conversation, but I was kind of focused on, like, this is a big, pl please make sure none of the gear kind of breaks down. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't even really present for the conversation. Mm -hmm. Like what, how do you prepare for, you know, interviewing a CEO? Cause I mean, you can tell I hardly uh, prepared for this because I want to be fresh. Right. I want to meet you as a new human being. It's a know? really good point. I like to throw a few questions together. So I do some research on the company and on the person, have some questions that I think our viewers would want to hear, but that's very loose. Those are there for me uh, on a screen so that I don't have to worry about it and I can go to them. But then I do want to get this happening. The problem is what we're doing now is amazing uh, because there's no lag time. Mm. When you're on a Zoom call, <sighs> heartbreak. even when it's a good Zoom call, and we go to great lengths to capture their audio and video like you're doing now, um, 
but there's still a slight lag and just a few milliseconds is enough so that, you know, there's times when you're going to cut me off and that's totally fine. But if you cut me off in the wrong time, it just, I'm confused now. There's a subtle nuance of being in person where you see me kind of gesture and you exactly. talk a little bit louder and I say, this is an important point. I'll right. back off unless mine's right. more, you know, it's, it's kind of like a, you know, but yes, when you did Mark, that's why I'm like, I wanted really good audio on his yep. and you can kind of clip it. So it sounds real, but the actual, so I, for my personal show, I never did zoom except for one person for the effective altruism movement. Mm -hmm. There's a couple important things, but so what's a day in your life? Like, I mean, like are people like reaching out to people, you know, or telling you, you got to reach out to these people such as Mark or like, how do you assess that? I mean, yeah. you, what you say holds some power to many right. people in their money, their finance. I'm like, right. that's an interesting place to find yourself. Yeah, in. it really is. I take a lot of my, um, like, how to handle this from Adam Savage from Mythbusters uh, because he has his own YouTube channel and he's been very open about this over the years. You know, he had a huge trajectory, right? He was on the air for like 16 years. Um, and he said in the first few years, lots of people would reach out to him and tell him that same thing. Like, you you should do this. You say the word um too often. You say that. <laughs> and he said in the first couple of years, he was taking it all in. Okay, I have to, okay, rules, rules. Mm -hmm. And then he said at some point, he said, screw you. I'm, I am who I am. I'm going to talk how I am if you don't like it go pound sound mm -hmm. and that's go pound sand and that's, i'm gonna start using that well i don't know if i'm allowed to swear but <laughs> oh yeah uh, you go for it um but that's curse. No, but kidding. that's what i had to just get comfortable with is because you're now dealing with more than 50 people right you're dealing with thousands of people and as they start to tell you things you don't know how to shut that off that's why i don't like youtube comments i never read them and you're even in a more precarious situation because it's also comments about your son right you know it's like whew, that's a mental minefield yeah and it's comments about i mean people don't well, maybe they do realize, but you say something negative and it just washes off the 20 positive comments you just read because it really hurts. So it's really hard. I just don't like to read them anymore. Um, that's why I think I like our patrons. It's like these are people who actually want to be here. To me, it's like when you pay to go see a show, mm -hmm. those are the people you want to please. Yeah, you've opted in. They're like, they're, I keep clinging those glasses together. Um, yeah, like you know they're kind of right. wanting it. That's a really good – so there's a whole – I've never really been on Patreon. Um, is this kind of – it's like Substack but for videos or like so – Yeah, it's a, a place where you can go and support whatever – I mean there's comic book writers. There's whatever you want to support. Um, and it's just – it's a nice place because it feels like these are people you want to listen to. Yeah. You know, those are the comments you do want to read um, because if they're paying to be here, then – they like you. Yeah. Um, it's like buying a ticket. Yeah. Not to delve too much into like your personal finances, but it's a fascinating question of like, you're an investor, you have an investment group. And when you get money incoming, like, do you, do you like take it and then put it toward investment that you like tell, like, yeah. it's a really big running circle. It is. You know, I'm like, I'm curious how you view money. Yeah. Like so what it is for the investor group. A lot of times I'll buy stocks that I'm not that interested in but so that i can follow them more closely because there's you know thousands of stocks so sometimes i'll be like okay i'm buying some stock in lucid so you have skin in the game kind of thing right or? so okay. that i can report on them and be like yeah well because i just wouldn't follow the companies closely if i didn't so i'll be like okay this ev company not that hot on it but i'm going to invest a little bit in it so that i can actually keep watching it more closely than i would have so that i can tell you guys what's going on what's the amount of money you have to have in something i mean if you bought one share that's 20 bucks or something you, you could. probably wouldn't care i generally invest like a thousand bucks in a company that i'm not that interested so in so then you kind of care you so care then about I, that then I, then I have some, right because then when it goes to zero you you lost a thousand bucks right exactly hmm so do you care more depending on how much money like yep oh interesting so it's yep. like so i mean for me personally i just cannot look at any stocks where I'm like mentally it's just you know it's like task switching a million times a day so mm -hmm. I'm like how do but that's part of your job so right. how do you wrestle with a down day or like a down month and then people come to you and say you told me what's your yeah. rationale now and you're like same rationale as the day I bought it right. hasn't changed like first part is I'm not a financial advisor right mm -hmm. so I mean everyone has their own place in life where they are and you know what, what's a good idea for me to invest in may not be good for you so that's a hard one I have to keep reminding people of that like don't just buy blindly what some guy on the internet said that's a recipe for disaster sage advice you can take some of my ideas and you know plug them into whatever your formula is and the other people you trust but like this is just one data point if Zach says, that's a great idea, don't just blindly do it. Um, and so that's important to remember. But the other thing you asked is like, how do you keep track of that all day? I spend 20 minutes a day on my portfolio. Mm. Um, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, but like... Rebalancing the VTI. <laughs> right. You can't... <laughs> Uh, I can't do my job and everything else if I'm spending hours, yes. you know, and so, yeah, it gets 20 minutes of my attention every day. I don't know if we can talk about it, but if we can, what interests you about FUV when you're talking to your people? Like, 
what gets you motivated? What gets you excited? You know? Number one thing is leadership of a company. Right. Um, you you are investing in, you know, you hear the word company thrown around a lot. Mm -hmm. What is a company? It's a bunch of people working on some goal. If you don't have a leader that can get those people up in the morning and working hard on that goal, it doesn't matter how many you have, how much money you have, it's that leader, their ideas, their motivation, their personality. So I look at that first. If I interview a person and you know, 20 minutes in, I'm falling asleep, I'm probably not that interested in that company. Mm. Um, whereas when I met Mark, all I knew about the company pretty much before that was some guy said, this is cool, and I met Mark. And I was like, I'm in. Oh, wow. This guy has my attention. He's got big ideas. He knows how to, he's already run another company successfully. That's huge. Mm -hmm. um, and he's doing something that like Elon seems impossible, mm -hmm. but he's, yet he's doing it. They're actually physically making this thing. Mm -hmm. So that was really exciting. Yeah, are there challenges? Sure. Then you start dialing into the next questions of like, is this product something that people are interested in? Is the price point right? Can they make money on it? Product market um, fit, product market founder fit. And I have a big advantage here because I get to talk to people who are interested in EVs and I get to go, hey guys, look at this thing. We give you, you know, a bunch of points about it. What do you think? Mm -hmm. And what I heard back was, oh yeah, I want one. And this is your Patreon or this is your investment uh, group? Uh, pretty much just the YouTube channel. Just oh, like, cool. you know. So you do read some comments. <laughs> I read some comments, but also just emails would come in. I mean, mm. I would just get like, get that guy back on. How do I invest? Where do I sign up? Like, and you get a, you can get a quick feeling for sentiment from those, those, those points. Cause at that point, I don't even think we had our, our uh, investor club. Yeah. Um, and so if you talk to a community and you start getting that back, whereas sometimes you'll, you know, have an interview and you throw that out to the community and they're like, that guy's a scam. So that tells you a lot. And that's pretty powerful because we have a lot of intelligent people who watch us. So if they're all on one way or the other, that, that tells you a lot too. Yeah. Let's talk briefly about a company that uh, you may have heard was a scam. And so he shipped me two when it, when it occurred okay. and I haven't drank one. So I'm actually going to crack into one that I put in the fridge. Okay. Um, but it's free water. Like, you, you know, you've heard about them yep. and it seemed almost too good. They broke the whole disruptive theory of they don't charge the product, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, just super briefly, the, the way that you exactly, it's not just like a, a pitch. Mm -hmm. um, we were making TikToks. They're making TikToks. Mm -hmm. I reached out to them. Their CEO found it so meaningful. He had three full-time people making TikToks because um, they weren't, they're not public. So they mm -hmm. can say, invest in us if yep. you want. Mm -hmm. You know, they can, they can kind of do that. Um, and he said, I love your company. I heard about you a couple years ago on Now You Know. Wow. So that's why <laughs> the tendrils of your effect, I mean, you impacted Arkimoto's relationship with another company. They gave us eight to 10,000. I mean, they printed thousands of our ad with QR codes and handed these out at South That's by so Southwest, cool. massive events. Um, and you know, then they also put those videos of them handing it out and mm -hmm. people like looking at it on their social media, they got hundreds of thousands, millions of views cumulative. I'm mm -hmm. um, like, it's wild. And it would seem like almost, you know, it's, it's kind of out of your ordinary. So, yeah. um, but is that part of like, if you someone suggests something and it seems like a scam, do you have to second guess yourself? I'm like maybe something seems too oh, good to be yeah. true. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's also just time and energy. Like mm -hmm. um, I I'm the kind of person who loves opportunity, and I think not many people know what an opportunity looks like. Right? We hear the word a lot. It's built into America, right? Opportunity. But um, who's taught you what an opportunity is? What I tell my interns and people who listen is that an opportunity is this: it's people, right? When you meet someone, there's an opportunity. Um, you have to size up that person really quickly because you probably don't have a lot of time mm -hmm. and talk to that person. And if you feel that, wow, this person's really cool, then you got yourself an opportunity because you're heading places and it's great that I know you. Um, so the same thing is true when you get like some offer from an email, you know, email offer from some company, you got a few seconds, you got to decide something. And that's the problem is you're not meeting a person, you're getting an email. Um, it would be great if you you know, met someone because then you could, we're really good at that as humans. We're really good at sizing up. Is this guy legit? So should people send you a 10 second clip of themselves? Talking? I think that'd be really smart. <laughs> Never thought of it, but I I'm actually it, now thinking of that's the way to email. Like I think how. so. I think, I mean, right. Cause you're much you more likely, someone. you're much, li if someone sent you a, an email with a YouTube link, you probably click on it. And in a few seconds, you either be really intrigued or you'd click off. Something that surprised me in this conversation and getting to know you um, is this reoccurring theme that you keep bringing up, which is the importance of just a, how people communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. Interpersonal communication seems like almost something that you put ultimate, penultimate yes. in your life. Yeah. Has that always been you or have you developed this kind of 
That's now a you're a YouTube question. celebrity and you're like, whoa, this is pretty much the most important skill you can develop thing, you know, for success is how to communicate with others where they believe in you. They want to play long-term games with you. They want to keep interacting with you. How That's does this come into really your life as question. important? Really good question. I, I think it's something that we've forgotten about. I think a whole generations have gotten really uh, so bad at communication that they have de- that they're afraid to do it, which is why I think so many people text today. Mm-hmm. Texting, if I text you right now, I don't have to be very good at anything really, language, spelling, um, I, and, I, and I don't have to worry that if you don't got back, get back to me right away that there's any problem, right? Mm-hmm. So I've taken time out of it. I've taken facial expression out of it. I've taken pretty much all human communication out of it, which is why it's such a horrible platform, in my opinion. Um, and it's why you can misinterpret it so much. It's like, if I write a sentence, you, unless it's like, meet me at this place, if I write a normal sentence, you could read it six different ways. Yeah. But that's what we've told generations of people now to do is just text. Mm. Uh, why don't they have a phone? Why don't they just pick it up and call? Because that involves time, right? So you and I are now talking, you have to think of a response right away, which is scary if you don't have that skill yet. You have to get the tone of your voice right. Like there's just so many things you have to learn. So basically it's a skill that no one's learned. And so how do you embody this? Like how do you teach it to your son? How do you, how could this come, like make a regrowth, you know, in, yeah. in America? Just doing it. Just doing I mean, it. Uh, when we do the show, I can see that we're both better at it and both work off each other better because we've done it for 300 weeks. Um, so your your show kind of developed that skill. Was it not in your like? Was it not as present in your mind before the show? Was it just yeah, watching I, I, yourself? It probably. It? I mean, I think just anything you do 300 weeks in a row, it's like playing guitar, right? <laughs> yeah. I and mean, the first time you pick up guitar, it sucks, and then every week it gets better. It's a skill, and we all know that is true. Like if I said I, I, I want to be a great guitar player, you wouldn't say like, great. Well, today you'll be one. Yeah. And we, there's a class at a uh, community college that you can take, but there's no real track in life for no. you're going to be able to talk to other people, right. which is how you get investments. It's right. how you get people to work for you. It's the right. most important skill we have in life. Right. And we just, nobody talks about it. That's why I, I'm appreciating you actually bringing it to the forefront of the conversation. Like, I, that's I, refreshing. I think it starts with reading to your kids. And mm. I think that that is also something that's lost. I think that uh, that takes time, right? And that takes uh, a schedule and all these things and finding books that your kids are interested in and staying age appropriate and all that stuff. And that's a lot of work and that's gone. I think it's easier to, Hey, here's a screen kid. Uh, watch, you know, watch this before you go to bed. So if there's, if there's reading to your kid, think of the skills you're picking up from your parent or whoever reads to you. Uh, you're picking up all the voice inflections, you're picking up language, you're picking up all that stuff. You're picking up, Hey, st- hang, hang on a second. What just happened in the book? You know, that's, I feel like that is what's made communication uh, possible, and yet we're not doing it anymore. I'm just imagining you reading to your adult son in the Model X. <laughs> 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 it's funny. That's, that's personally why I get a lot out of listening to podcasts on 1x speed. You know, like when people start listening 1.5, I'm like, a big part of what I'm getting out of mm, listening to a podcast is the temporal part. It, yes, is learning how to communicate. Like, right. essentially, watching any high level show you're that's, watching expert communicators that's really interesting because right i'm guilty of that too i want to get the information faster let's two exit um but yeah then i'm losing all of the the vital the information, vital information yeah, so right and and if i'm not watching if i'm just listening to it then it's not as good as if i'm watching it yeah oh, which interesting. is interesting if you look at like joe rogan i don't really actually like how they shoot it mm. it's joe mm-hmm. it's the guest there's not shots a lot of, fired at this shot. there's not a lot of two shots i know but i mean i think the problem is we want big close-ups of the face yeah. right but i think that the two shots important i think that also the reason probably they don't is that while we're on the guest joe's probably drinking water we're drinking yeah. or you know um <laughs> I'm and, up all night. I'm messing with my eyes. Right. And, you know, yeah, absolutely. So much of what we're doing now is eye contact and, and all with that. With you, but not every guy. I don't know. Do you, do you interview people a lot? Is it an interesting thing when you are talking with someone, right. no eye contact. Right. And then occasionally if you look away, you notice they'll look at you. And if you look back, it it that and when people wear sunglasses are two things yep. that I find really actually impact really communication. Yeah. it's there's so much to communication that's it's really and it's tiring i mean i'll be honest like to do it right there's head nodding there's uh you know voice modulation there's all that stuff it's work um it it shouldn't be easy to have a good conversation when there's subtle uh like just me saying yeah to him like exactly. I'm, I'm following along but then the listener's saying i don't need to hear some person saying yes but for the conversation so it's like it, it's a very interesting thing and so again right. 
not looking into you too much before, what's your favorite part of the show? Is it documenting you and your son or is it uh, meeting CEOs such as Mark? Or is it, you know, like what part of that whole kind of interpersonal or just singular um, do you like? For instance, I love the fact that on Tuesday's show, I'll be able to bring them my experience of what I just experienced here in Eugene uh, with Arkimoto because I feel like um, there's so much misinformation about companies there's so much um well i read that they're losing money and it's like that that's not that's not the story so what's your biggest takeaway that you're going to come back and kind of talk about my good takeaway is i did not understand all their products i did not understand how uh ramp or their their factory was um how big it was and how they have to thread this needle that i did not fully understand i thought you you come up with a prototype and then you figure out how to make a million of them. <laughs> and what Mark and the team were telling me is you can't make a million of them too fast mm -hmm. because you're still iterating. You're still figuring out uh, this part might need to be changed a little bit. So he has to thread this needle of, uh, well, we can't just send that out to China and get 10,000 of these on the shelf. We have to make these ourselves so that when we do need to change them, it's not too expensive. And I mean, hats off to those guys because not only are they continually making the product better, but they're also making the product at the same time. That's just like iterative learning is like the most yeah. quick and powerful thing. Um, being from the outside, obviously, media, it's easy to hurl, not even insults, but like, you know, exactly. accurate. That's a solid <laughs> Mark, Mark's, uh, Mark actually just <laughs> I, I got a kudos on that. We're, uh, so we this show takes place right next door to Mark. Um, but being from the outside, looking at engineering, um, I think making a prototype or making one of something is the easy part. Scaling right. seems like by far. Yep. The most difficult That's task. That's what Elon says. And I think a lot of people think, well, the prototype was the hardest part. And I don't want to take away from that. I mean, when you make something, that's incredible. But I think a lot of people think, done, we made the prototype, so the rest is downhill. And from what we've seen, that you, you, you're you just into a world of pain <laughs> because you now have to figure out not only how to make it super hard, you have to make it cost effectively you have to make it economically so if i make this thing and it's wonderful but it costs a million dollars who cares no one's going to buy it and but so you said the biggest part and really quick i do want to be cognizant of your time it's been about a half hour how are you feeling in terms of body feels you need great cool just let me know when you're uh and uh you said the biggest thing is kind of the the leader um and that was one of my most poignant question i've ever asked in an interview i asked galley um is freeze was there and it, the show didn't air um unfortunately but i asked galley i'm like what do you think of the people who claim that investing in Tesla's like a reverse life insurance policy on Elon. Like if he dies, what's going to happen to the stock? Mm. And, um, you know, mm. like in some cases, people like you who put that much weight on people like Mark, yeah. Galley says, I'll only invest in companies where I had, like it's that much on one person's vision because otherwise yeah. it gets clouded. But mm, so you're just point. saying, yeah, um, just a second ago that you also need to be able to like scale it. So I'm like, when you're investing, how do you weigh out like the characteristics of the leader mixed with the financials? Like, you know, what's the in order kind of the most important things? I guess it depends what you want to get out of the investment. If you want to put some money in and it'll be there in 10 years, but you don't care if you 10 X it, mm -hmm. there's lots of companies you can put your money into because you're going to need Apple phones in 10 years. So that's, that's safe. Um, what makes companies like FUV or Tesla kind of insane is that it's possible that those companies could 10x 20x 30x mm -hmm. that's not common and then you buy options on margin <laughs> <laughs> right um so that's that excites a lot of people because we'd all like to 10x for money um, but it also means that you're making a big risk because these are companies that are doing things that now seem crazy and impossible in the future a lot of those companies like the Amazons and the you know Googles, they don't seem crazy anymore. But if I had come to you at some point and said, I've got this idea for a search engine, it'll make lots of money. You'd be like, well, how is that good? And that was me. I'll be honest. I remember I was working with a young kid. He told me, you know, Google's about to go public. Let's buy some shares. And I was like, $100 a share? They, How do they make money? Advertising. <laughs> later that day there's this bitcoin thing Pfft, what's that <laughs> <laughs> right the worst <laughs> oh, well and that's one reason why like we're starting some uh crypto mining on mm -hmm. our channel because i want to experience it firsthand you know jesse is very like i don't know dad um and i'm like yeah let's actually do it share the numbers with our investor club show them like does it work does it not what are the factors um because yeah you have to stay open-minded but it's interesting, like a lot of the power in Eugene comes from like hydro, like half of it's yeah. there, whereas some other places aren't. So almost like mm -hmm. even if, you know, people all hurl those insults and I'm really 
I'm, I'm talking and I'm trying to stay present and listen, but I keep coming around to this question I kind of pitched earlier. Okay. And I want to ask it in a more straightforward way of, you know, I've been really um, steadfast. of like, I'm going to put my money here and told people. And it was a triple leveraged ETF of companies such as Amazon, Google, Facebook. And I'm like, okay. in five years, they will be there. And this was before I was, our, it was a couple of years ago. And people close to me put amounts of money into it. And then, you know, the whole stock market's down and they're like, oh, mm -hmm. what do you think of that? And I just imagine you might be dealing with that on a much yeah. greater scale. The entire market's down yep. and they're asking about a stock you chose. Yep. When you look at it and all the fundamentals, that, like, yeah. I mean, that this must is, weigh on you, you know? It doesn't because um, I'm clear that I'm not a financial advisor. I'm giving you some of my take on things. And if you invest because of that, you're stupid. <laughs> like you should not, that's just dumb. That's so um, funny. You don't know enough about me and you, and, and you, what I what is good for me and the amounts I'm putting in and, and my time horizons are not you. Yeah. Um, are you transparent about that? Like what percent of your portfolio is to what and like your overall return? Like what, uh, with how much certain stock. I mean, so yeah, when we're talking about a stock, I'll usually say, "Here's where I got in. Here's where I got out." That kind of thing. Um, but what's important when investing? So much of it is emotion. Mm -hmm. If you are not emotionally ready to invest, you should not invest. You should also know what kind of investor you are. So if you are a investor. <laughs> then you are investing for, in my opinion, three to five years at least. If you're a trader, that's a whole different skill. I do not know that skill. I'm not interested in that skill. And that's, you're, we're still investing in stocks, right? But if you're a trader, you're buying and selling much faster and you don't really care about long-term things. You care about quarterly numbers and stuff like that. Great, that's not what I talk about. So I'm, when we're talking about say Tesla, I'm talking about Tesla bots. I'm talking about you know their solar division. I'm talking about things that are long term. Are they going to make cars fully self drive? Um, these are just mind blowing questions that to most people who just look at it quickly, they're like full self driving. What the? What are you talking about? I'm talking about when Tesla network is the only way to get a car, and when you can't drive a car that you own anymore. Mm -hmm. And these are things that when you say those to people, they're like, I won't be able to own a car. But it must have sounded crazy when someone said 100 years ago, you won't be able to bring your horse into New York. 13 years later, there were no horses in New York. So over a very short period of time. Or, you know, in 1906 when, uh, you know, Orville it, and it, Wright is making a plane fly, and there are very smart people like Thomas Edison saying, there will never be people flying in the air. So technology is constantly changing. We have... A perspective that is very hard to change because we have this brain that has evolved over thousands of years to keep us alive which said if those berries are dangerous don't eat them and anyone who tells you any differently don't listen to them and that kept us alive and that's great but now technology is changing so fast how do i know what's our going mind, on our minds aren't cannot evolve Can fast it? enough i don't i don't no. mean to be too flattering but it, it's Part of me wants to say, I'm like, wow, you're such a multifaceted person. But at the end of the day, you seem to be interested in the core basics, mental health, being able to communicate with people, financial health, which takes away burdens, which ruins your mental health. So I guess what has played a role in you coming to this place? And you're like, what books, what TV shows, what podcasts, mm. what's like talking to the family? How did you, what are the most important building blocks of becoming you that other people may be able to take away mm. and become more like you? If they find parts of you that they're like, I'd like to be more like that. Mm. Like myself right now, I'm like, you know curiosity mm. um well my name is tiger i'm a cat so i can't go that way <laughs> <laughs> something else though <laughs> yeah um if you're curious the world is available to you i in my lifetime when i was a kid if i was curious i had to go to the library take out an encyclopedia britannica book try and find that thing it was already 10 years out of date most likely <laughs> it was written boringly and there was maybe a picture <laughs> I'm still amazed that when I talk to people and they go, what is that thing? You know, I don't know, whatever. And they leave it. And I'm like, you have a phone in your pocket that will give you the answer right now. Do you stay up till 3 a.m. Googling stuff? Sometimes? Yes. I do too. I'm that guy yeah. who's just, oh, you wanted to know the answer? Yeah. I pull it out and I want to learn. And you just get in these trains of like, yeah. okay, well now. And then it like loops into this other thing. And that's YouTube for me. And that's why I love oh. it because YouTube has intelligent people telling their life stories. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's why I love Joe Rogan. I love podcasts. I love, I just, there's not enough hours in the day for me to get this. I guess what I would love to have would be someone that I trust who could t be like, listen to these 10 things today. <laughs> because I spend a lot of time, like many of us, trying to find those things. Um, and so when you do find those things, you tend to stick with them, right? So when I find a podcaster I like, I want to keep coming back. Um, 
because yeah, I, I, I want to get inside of smart people's minds. Have you heard of Naval Ravikant? I'll keep it really brief. No. I, I pretty much listened to not only one podcaster, two episodes of a podcast on repeat day because I, there's some core basics that I want to embody more than all these kind of extra so the same things. two like you just want to get more there's and more a, out there's of it. a 30 minute one on happiness and there's a three hour one on wealth creation playing long-term games mm-hmm. how compounding interest in relationships building trust mm-hmm. and all these things how it all plays together and it's just I I would really be curious to, to hear I would if you love to check that out I'm curious how you judge any sort of media like YouTube, but for me, it's signal to noise ratio mm. of what I can take away from it that allow me to be healthier, mentally healthier, physically healthier, financially healthier. Mm. That is all that matters for me in consuming media. So signal to noise. So you mean that like if it's an hour long, but you're only going to get two minutes of good stuff, that's not good enough kind of thing. Oh, yeah. I, I hear you, but sometimes those two minutes, mm-hmm. like I was watching a Dave Chappelle recent special and there was like one 30 second piece in there that was worth the whole, I mean, not, <laughs> the whole thing was great, yeah. but there was 30 seconds there that changed a lot of things for mm-hmm. me. So it's like, sometimes there's these little gems that, you know, it's, you got, that's why I just love long form. It's just like, you want to listen for the three hours. Hopefully you're getting lots of entertaining stuff and whatever, but then there's hopefully that minute where you're like, yeah. and I got to being gotta, socialized like kids yeah. in class. You're like, um, I guess, an example of a five second clip out of, I think it was a really long podcast that really stuck with me. It wasn't even them. They were quoting Richard Feynman. It goes back to earlier curiosities. Mm. Um, you can be someone who views nothing as a miracle or everything as a miracle. Mm. Those are the two kind of fundamental ways mm. of viewing reality. It's like, you know, we're just on a rock where these little mm-hmm. things are, holy cow, how did consciousness exist? You know, it's like mm. wings developed in so many creatures. It's like, mm-hmm. wow, that's, you know, an evolutionary trait that things go toward. Mm-hmm. Whereas like long necks is just giraffes or long trunks. And consciousness, what we're experiencing is just one. It's like, it's not like all these animals kind of converged on it, like mm-hmm. wings, like insects, right. birds, uh, fish. It's like, right. whoa, this is phenomenal that any of this is even possible. Yeah. It's it's mind-blowing to think that as smart as we think we are, if we could come back from 100 years in the future, we would see how stupid we are, right? Because if we could go back to the 1800s, mm-hmm. you and I would be the smartest people in any room. Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, not saying we're not smart, but like any room, um, because there's just so much stuff that we know that they don't know. But they probably wouldn't believe a lot of it. Exactly. Their books. Exactly. Would kind of, if, yeah. if we told them that you could fly in a big bird in the sky across the country, they, you know, what crazy lock the, lock them up. Yeah. And what I'm saying is, a hundred years from now, the stuff that we'll be able to figure out and do mm-hmm. today again seems absolutely insane to us i'm sure if we heard about it yeah so to loop back for just a second um if you're kind of ref- like and i actually 100 uh, percent agree it's not just signal the noise but like you're saying a good joke can make a whole hour so what do you go for and like when you're watching a youtube video are you hoping you imbibe some good joke from it some good way of living like like what's in it for you in the terms of we're all selfish we're thinking about ourselves all day okay. our relationships like what do you get out of media or what do you hope to get out of media I'm very curious about technology. I'm very curious about, uh, you know, the fact that we're probably going to be able to live forever very soon. Like, the you know, people like David Sinclair are working on the technologies. Transhumanism. Uh, you know, um, th- there's just so much amazing technology. So I guess, like, number one is just I love smart people who go back to first principles. And as soon as I hear that that's the way they think, I'm like, great, I'm, I'm there with you. You're going to uh, get a lot more emails from uh, founders who are saying, I'm a first principle thinker. Right. <laughs> I know. It's overused. Takeaway. It's overused. But um, it's super important uh, because there's so many people out there who are just either looking to make a buck and just trying to twist something just a little bit to make more money. Um, if you're trying to go back to first principles and solve some amazing problems to save this planet or to help people, that's so great. Um, unfortunately, capitalism doesn't always reward that, right? And our educational system has so fucked up that we've got many generations of kids now who can't critically think and so... Communicate. Can't as communicate. You touched on earlier. Exactly. And you wonder why everyone's unhappy because they don't... We didn't teach them how to think. We didn't teach them what to think about. Um, and so life seems pretty flat. So my understanding of what you just kind of said, um, and if we are kind of near the end of the show, I really have one core last question about, I just turned 25 earlier this month. Like, you know, what, advi- what advice would you give to 25 year olds? But we'll touch on that. Kind of when we get to the end, just feel mm-hmm. free to touch on that. Um, I understood you saying, go to first principles. How are you going to reduce suffering and mm-hmm. promote health in the world? Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's like, 
you know, in some ways making money, if it's in a sustainable way, could be a good thing for certain companies. But also, much like you um, taught free water about Arkhamoto and then they helped us, something you say could be listened to by one person. They say that phrase to another person and then that person could go on to not hurt themselves or right. kill themselves. Or like, right. And you'll never meet any of those people. Right. It's this, you know, know. it's it's. So I know it's real. a responsibility. I know, um, you know. I mean, so many people get onto social media and they're just trying to promote themselves or make themselves look good or whatever. I really don't like that um, because you are actually hurting someone if you're if you're on Instagram, spending 16 minutes to get the shot of you looking cool and sexy and svelte. Um, you're not. That's not you. And so someone's going to see that and say, oh, gosh, I can never look that good. And that person always looks so cool. And they're always having a fun time. So and I think when I see Danny DeVito's Instagram, it's depressing for me. I'm like, oh, I just want to be him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And to me, that's why that whole platform of like Instagram is kind of worthless because it's yeah. pretty much been co-opted by groups of people that are making things worse or Facebook. Like I'm not a big Facebook fan. It can be used wonderfully, mm -hmm. but for the most part, the algorithm just keeps you on it. And so it's trying to make you click on those things, which your brain is always telling you is like, Oh, I want to click on those happy people, but mm -hmm. you're, oh, I'm not as happy as them all the time. So what's your solution to ask? Cause that's our, to the point of we've been doing this about a year. I don't even touch my own social media anymore. Mm -hmm. Like me looking at feeds, I'm looking at Arkhamoto's yeah, but, well, feed. But I'm like, you're, <laughs> you're trying to actually use social media to do a good thing wouldn't it be about you're just saying like promote it or like i can't promote me as like a human being but like promoting an idea or project it's it's i mean i watch the social dilemma and i'm like i want to get off social media i'm like oh that's that's my job <laughs> there's nothing wrong with social media mm. the problem is that facebook um instagram even twitter uh the algorithms are just trying to keep you on if you're trying to keep somebody on you're not doing it right mm-hmm if naturally you want to stay on it for the right reasons, that's great. I think YouTube is pretty cool in that sense that they're trying to show me videos that I'll be interested in. Um, and if that keeps me on the platform, great. TikTok does that too. Once you sure. really actually get into it, it's a black hole. Of these is the exact Except that I, like I would argue, and maybe I'm old, maybe I'm showing my age yeah. here, but if it's too short, that's feeding into the wrong part of your brain. There's some really critical thing that has to take place that doesn't happen in 30 seconds. We're going to end this. I'm going to show you 10 TikToks. It'll radically shift your mind. Okay. It's mind blowing. I was kind of against it. And then we started doing it. I'm like, this is potentially the greatest platform for learning really, really quick. Cause they're like, once you have a base understanding of a field, you can see just the pinnacle of someone's last 10 years of study. They're like one. I would love, grade. I would love for you yeah. to change my mind on that. I, my oh, fear, fine. my fear yes. only is that I've heard from young people a lot. They're like, they'll give me some fact and I'll, Oh, where'd you learn that? TikTok. Okay, great. Who? I don't know. As soon as I hear, I don't know, I lose a lot of credibility and interest because if you tell me, Oh, this TikToker and I know them, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's great. But, I'm fearful when I hear people say, oh, I learned it on TikTok, that it's like, well, but there's a lot of people tell you a lot of things. So I don't know. But even if a credible person says, oh, it's, uh, you know, the viceroy of whatever, of science says it, that's still meaningless to me. And Or some random person could say something, but if it logically through first principles makes sense, it doesn't matter to me who says it. That's how sure. I like, I question, there's been times in my life where I'm like, what's the proof that I need to go to sleep? Has anyone, how would, what's the mechanism that you die from sleep? Like, I really think we should be questioning all the core aspects of how we're currently living. It. Is it benefiting or hurting? I love it. And when you get something new, I don't care who says it. You know, like my worst enemy could right. tell me something. I'm like, that's going to help me live better. I love that because, you know, as Elon said, I mean, how much of your programming have you done? It's probably about less than 20%. Yeah. Um, and that's really scary to think about. It's like, so all this information in my head is not my own programming. <laughs> Then it gets into the free will argument. We'll stay away from that territory. <laughs> but that's why I'm ch kind of ch consciously choosing to listen to the same two podcasts because I've noticed a m very positive shift in my life to the point where I think the things that you put input into your brain really matter. I came mm -hmm. up with, yeah. I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm free, I'm loved, I'm grateful, and I'm balanced, I'm, or balanced, I'm grateful just to be. And like, even though, you know, at any given day, I'm one of those things, if I'm lucky, but you really have to just tell yourself like, I'm all, I, I have everything I need. Mm -hmm. I can breathe. I have water. Mm -hmm. I have sunshine. We don't, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. you got to get away from this trap of needing and wanting yeah. stuff. Like, I mean, that's, we that's, got in, yeah. yeah, we got into vaping for a little while. And the worst part about that may not even be the health, but it's every 30 seconds you're reminded, I want something. Mm -hmm. I need something to right. feel good. And it's like, right. whoa, the mental aspect of yeah. illegal substance is the most detrimental thing to us. 
it's yeah. you know it's a minefield how do you feel raising a kid in this minefield? i mean kenzie and i 25 and 27 were like how do we even raise a kid today like, you right. can't keep them away from you know do i not let them have a screen <laughs> at what age do i get my phone right we had all the same questions but and it was just peer pressure i mean what, what happened in 2010 2012 all the kids got phones and if you chart uh depression suicide it's all from that point right so we did something wrong obviously i think we need to seriously look at social media and again it's not a bad thing i mean there's amazing things that take place on social media i don't that's the worst part is like it should not be banned or gotten rid of we need to look at how we're using it and think about how the algorithms work and think about what is it doing to us and we haven't really taken the time to do that because it's so fast it's only been 10 years i think the biggest thing is it makes you more into who you already were so we go into it not developed and we're like i kind of think i like dogs and people who look like this and now it just shows you that for the next right. decade it entrenches you in it whereas i'm like just if you could develop and you know, just because right. it's hard to break out, especially right. with stuff like TikTok. That's the negative side. I'm not even in engineering and I'll get engineering TikToks I don't even see or I learn about the demon core of they're trying to get it to super criticality. And this person like the, the neutrons burn their hand. I'm like, I would have never been exposed to that if not for some app that sure. I like one engineering thing. And now it shows me physics. And mm -hmm. now so I'm like, it, it has tremendous potential to pigeonhole you into who you were when mm -hmm. you first got on for the rest of your life. Yeah. Or if you just change kind of every day. It right. doesn't know what to throw at you. And that's where right. I think the potential kind of is. But how do you... <sighs> right. I would not want to be in charge of the algorithm, you know. Right. But it's so powerful. It's so powerful. It's so powerful because there's only... I mean, there's so much content, mm -hmm. only so little time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if I'm allowed to put together like a playlist, I'll just keep building playlists and just I never get to watch them all. 30 just, tabs open. Right, because yeah. there's just... Exactly. There's so much stuff I want to see. The interesting thing is everyone's the good guy in their own mind. Like you... And yep. I'm not like trying to say anything, but like you probably think it's a positive thing when the algorithm shows your videos sure. to someone new. It's like once you start thinking all the content creators yep. genuinely think they're the good person. Right. Who's creating the rules? Who's saying which way? Like, exactly. Oh, not my job. Right. Yeah. Oh. It's a so, really good point. To go back to it, how how should someone raise? Like, I mean, if if I'm like, man, you seem like a good figure to learn from. What what advice would you give for two people who are considering maybe I, doing it sometime the next day? I don't you know? know because it's changing so fast that the advice I'm going to give you is old. Mm. And I mean, it can be well intentioned and all that, but it's not going to be your reality. And that's you've already given me what you, you're lying. You said read to your kids. That's I would, one from earlier. I would, that I'm but gonna you know, I. I'm probably going to be dated when we look back and we go, but yeah, but now we just Neuralink the book into your head. Mm -hmm. So like for me to tell you to read it is going to be like, yeah, but I can only get through like one book a week. Whereas mm -hmm. if I Neuralink it into my kid's brain, they'll get hundreds. So maybe what I'm telling you is just completely outdated. Much like uh, reading, listening to a podcast too fast, you don't learn how to speak right. to people. If you read a book too fast, you're not learning how to think. Right. Because you can't logically think that fast. Right. So the slower you read. I, I believe that reading a book at least works on some amazing piece of your brain that we don't work on, which is imagination. When you read a book, let's say it's Harry Potter. Uh, you know, I read Harry Potter to my kids. That Harry Potter was their own. Mm -hmm. You watch the movie, now Daniel Radcliffe now is our Harry cool. Potter. Yeah. And the problem is, that's a common thing, right? And it's fun to talk about, but the Harry Potter that you read at bedtime, you imagined all of that, what Dumbledore looked like and what the spells did and all that you created. And that is humans most powerful thing that we have that no other creature that we know of has imagination that's why mark made this vehicle and why he keeps iterating because he has imagination that is something i don't know how to teach except to say reading books yeah i i wish that watching videos did it but it doesn't as soon as you visually get that input that is what it is when you have to just sit there and read to yourself or hear it I think that's why people like audiobooks so much because you can still imagine while you're driving and getting read an audiobook. So again, I think it'll probably seem dated in a decade or two, but I do think that reading is probably still something that's amazing. Why books are so loved. I think that's great. And Ken, I don't know if Kenzie's laughing. She, I guarantee she knows where I'm going with this is the reason I c cannot read fiction is have you ever heard of the aphantasia to prophantasia spectrum? No. Of So generally it's not like um, dichotic view, but people think in lines of like words oh, okay. or people think in imagery. Right. And I, and it's like some people have, you know, both. Some people have such vivid. I mean, I know people who are like, yeah, I can imagine an apple right here. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm like, if I'm in a different room, I can't imagine what Kenzie's face looks like. Okay. So if I'm reading like the Godfather, I'm thinking of it, a, like tying together storylines. I have none of the vivid imagery in my head. 
And that's where I'm like, okay, you're, you have a, ki- a teacher who's visual teaching your kid who's that. And a big part of it is I didn't paint or draw or anything growing up or like model very much. So why, why my brain developed to do what I did, which is I was read to a lot, mm-hmm. you know? So I'm like, whew, it's, it's such an interesting place when you mm-hmm. say like, if, if I was forced to read Harry Potter, I would hate it because I'd have no imagery mm-hmm. and I'm not getting that like signaled noise of, I just want to be healthier mm-hmm. mentally, physically, financially. I just want to reduce suffering in myself and those around me. So it's mm. like, it's such different routes, but like, mm. you know, having an outlet for creativity and imagination, getting in a world is probably that equivalent for people like Kenzie or people who actually can imagine stuff like, we're right. all so different, you know? I think, I guess the other advice I would give is like, um, I think school sucks. Yes. Um, <laughs> Thank you for saying it. Um, it's, you know, it's a system developed to make us good factory workers. And so if I could go back in time, if I could somehow find a school or if I could homeschool my kids, I don't know if I had the abilities or the skills, but like school, you know, the age old argument is like, it helps you to be social and blah, blah, blah. but there's just so much bad that you get out of it. I mean, it's great. They teach you to read and write. I mean, I think those are very basic, awesome things. They probably do fairly well, but um, yeah, if there's a better way to school, that would be amazing. Cause I think we're really fucking up lots of people with our educational system. All right. You gave us great live feedback about our ads. You watched four or five of them. Here's my rough plan. Or like, you know, if Kenzie and I have a job where we get to live, she thinks I'm doing a different, <laughs> almost a joke. I'll talk about that after. Um, we have a job where we get to work from home. So if we homeschooled our kids, they would be learning the job. They would learn how to communicate with people, mm-hmm. how to make ideas stick by advertising, how to kind of be persuasive. Like, would the kid be able to learn everything? Like, you need to throw a little math right, in there, but like right. one of the ads had math. I'm like, d- like if you're at where you were now, I don't know what your job was back when your kid mm-hmm. was that age. Do you think you could homeschool your kid by not following a rule book, but by teaching them what you do? I, I don't know. I Homeschooling is, is so tough because... Um, I don't feel qualified to do all of like, I know that it takes patience and it takes, you know, so there are certain things that school is good at in the sense that, you know, I know that if they go to school today, they're probably going to learn their ABCs. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know that most parents barely have time to, you know, think. So in in our country, we don't value children um, even enough to protect them in schools. Um, You know, we're having debates about, you know, should we take guns away from people or should we, why don't we just protect them when they're in school? I don't know. I, I can't imagine homeschooling. I can't imagine, like, th- that's such a tough thing. Did Crosby, um, Still, and Nash not teach us anything? Right. <laughs> teach our children well. Yeah. It's uh, words to live by. I, I feel like we should almost have some kind of community school where, like, on your block, you know, on Monday, you guys are teaching the kids and not doing your job. And then on Tuesday, the next neighbor who's good at this is teaching, the, you know. Um, but, you know. Until sure. you have one parent who yells, they they have a exactly. yelling personality. Now and all those kids forever have that. It's, exactly, it's and so then tricky. you know, and then if, right, of course, if that block isn't that full of that educated people, those kids don't get educated well. So like, I don't, yeah, I don't know the answer. But the positive, of what you just touched back on, we get to loop all the way back around to Fuv of, uh, you know, a little community of yeah. we need to be walkable. Yeah. We like yep. that's my favorite part of yep. the fun. I ask every employee, all these people, mm-hmm. I'm like, what's your favorite part? They're like, the environment or the you know the fun. I'm like, my favorite part is cities will be safer for pedestrians yep. cities will be safer for people biking yep. and like yeah you could say it's like a mix between a motorcycle and a car it's almost like hey that's too far for me to bike there mm-hmm. i want to have a, as much fun as a bike ride right. it's like this really hard to kind of fit in thing of, well and you're not in a metal box i yes. mean yes there's some metal yes. to protect you but yep. you are actually in the community yeah i heard more people talking today than i've ever heard in a car so getting back in a car after being in a fub for like a week is, is isolated yeah yeah it makes me i'm like oh it's not even i don't know how to descri- right. now i'm at your place where i'm like i you know it's been a year of me driving yep. all the time i don't know how to describe the aspect of how isolating it is to right. be like, I'm getting in this, I'm gonna have no awareness of how, I'll right. go 80 on the freeway, I'm like, what am I doing? Right. And if I'm like, I'm very aware of my speed, yep. it just, I would want my kids to be walking around right. a city of people who are present. It right. keeps you conscious and aware. But you know, the other weird thing is in a few years, it's not gonna matter. We're gonna have autonomous cars or autonomous whatevers. Yeah. And so we're not gonna be driving anymore. Yeah. And if you say that to most Americans, they get very mad, right? Because it's my cars and my space and free, <laughs> uh, my freedom. I like owning right. stuff. <laughs> and it's like- Even though that stuff owns me. <laughs> exactly. How much are you spending every year on that car that you could be spending on yourself? Yeah. Um, and, and why are you taking care of your car more than your family? And why do you care so much about the car you drive? you know it's created so many problems um and yet we 
hold on to it so tightly. I'm really happy because this is going to be the longest part. I mean, we're about to break Mark's podcast in like five, ten minutes. That's the longest. That's all I wanted to do. Yeah, be like Trump. And then it'll get him to come back on. I'm like, nice. It'll be, you know. Um, how would you pitch it to people? Maybe even like, you know, people who are of the opposite mindset of why they shouldn't own it. Why should they should love the idea of not owning everything, you know? Yeah. Um, well, if you just want to look at your wallet, it's just so expensive. You don't even realize how many things they, they you know, insurance, um, fuel, your mechanic, worried all the time that you, oh my God, my brakes just went. All that is gone. If you don't own something, I mean, why do you think 10%, the, 10% the of people of in thing. San Francisco stopped owning a car when Uber came out? Why? Because like, oh, why don't you, I can just boom, 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 this guy will drive me to work. Mm-hmm. Um, the problem with a lot of people is like, oh, I don't know who this guy is, right? Mm-hmm. Well, we get rid of that when we have autonomous. Mm-hmm. Um, the cost goes way down. It's, you don't have to worry about parking it. You know, I mean, why do, why do Americans have garages? Like, we, we dedicate all this space to this inanimate object that sits there for 95% of the time that we have to pay for that we only use for 5% of the time. Or it's worse. We put our personal goods in there and then we park our, right, exactly. our Good point. thing on the street. Good point. Meanwhile, it's not, I, I can't right. put a bookshelf or a sofa on the street and be right. like, that's mine. So it's, right. It's... But you mentioned something. Everyone's always been like, it's cheaper. But you actually said you don't have to think about, oh, the brakes need to go out. As soon as you said that, I'm like, I mean, Kenzie's nodding too. The mental cost yes, we of don't how much it. of your time. We don't count it. Yeah, no. How much of That's America. More important. We only count it if you can put an immediate dollar figure yes. on it. We don't count health. Yeah. Your mental health, there's no chart anywhere that counts it right? They figured out how much you're worth, right? I think it's $3 million. Your life is worth $3 million. So if I make a car and it's like, well, he'll die, but uh, we'll make $4 million. Great. We've counted that. We have not counted your health, your your happiness. We have not counted that unless I can go, well, his happiness is if he'll pay for this cruise. <laughs> That's the only way we've counted well, it. And your time isn't okay. So say right. you spend one hour this week thinking about, oh, I really need to get stress fix. Oh, I went there and it was... Yep. That hour, what if you spent that on your portfolio right. and you may, you know, it's like yep. once you start thinking about time and that's why yep. early on the show, not to like really loop it back, but as I said, how do you think about money? Yep. Because money and time are so interconnected. So it's such a cliche to even talk about it that right. way. But when you start doing like these average things of like, I have a $5 thing from Amazon I don't want. Right. Is it even remotely worth my time to right. drive 10 minutes to return it? Right. And you're like, do I just give it to someone? I'm like, it just gets really yep. kind of, you know, hard to. Yeah. put a framing to so I'd, as someone who's a little bit further down that financial mental path than me what tips would you have a signal to noise ratio of what are some good frameworks of thinking about money and time that have served you well um first of all you're critically thinking now which is so great right critically thinking means that you question things For if you the first question, time in an hour i'm finally doing it ask one critical question if you question <laughs> things and you know you've been doing this I'm this kidding, whole time you, when you question things in your life that's exactly what you should be doing you should always be questioning authority mm. things in your life yeah. right but most of us don't want to do that why because it's really uncomfortable it cognitive dissonance is well he told me this and i thought that i can't have both these conflicting ideas in my head at the same time mm-hmm. right and so i got to get rid of one of them so he's an idiot He's an idiot. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm back to where I was. Well, that's because we're afraid to critically think and go, well, you know, let me question what I've been thinking this whole time because he brought up something interesting. If we just did that, mm-hmm. we would be on such a better place because we all are going to have different answers. Yeah. But, you know, there's no one answer. Everyone's looking for the one answer. There isn't. Mm-hmm. But if you critically think, you'll continually ask the questions that you need to ask in your life. Yeah. Um, so I'd say, number one, that, that would be it. Being curious and critically thinking are huge. Um, Curious what you what you think about all day, but what you just said is I asked Kenzie, I'm like, Kenzie, how do you define stress? And she gave me a really good explanation. I'm like, wrong, because I was just in a mood. Because um, I just like learned something. I'm like, this is absolutely the right answer. But uh, I heard it described <laughs> I heard it described as like stress on a steel beam is when you you're push you want it to be in a place you want to sleep, but you want to work. You're you have stress. Like you want to be at a party, but you want to be here. Okay. You want to spend money on this and you want to save it for a house. Okay. It's like that stress is the fun so it's just at some point you're saying oh there's you have to pick one but you do kind of have to pick one you know like how well, do you kind of so, weigh that out so one of the problems uh, there's been studies on humans that show that we're really bad at um delaying gratification so if i put an oreo in front of you or some cookie you like and i say i'm going to leave the room for 15 minutes when i come back if that oreo is <laughs> still there you'll get a second well two-thirds of kids when they do these tests eat the oreo but do they account for the, how many kids just want one Oreo or one marshmallow? Like, that's my whole thing. I'm like, sometimes one's enough. That's not why they're doing it, though. <laughs> I mean, that's part of the test. They should do it with an adult and $100. Sure. <laughs> 
Right. And I mean, but we do. I mean, America has shown that most, it's about two thirds of the people cannot delay gratification. That's why you have things at the checkout aisle and why it works, right? I mean, I get a pack of gum. Right. How do you delay gratification? You're like, what, what's an example of you, you or someone you know, or me in the time you've met me? Not, or because it's such an abstract term. And I, at least in the past, like years and years since learning about that in school, you know, I don't know what examples of delaying gratification would that, you know, how, how do you kind of put it in more concrete terms for people? You have to, I don't think, uh, the more I've been thinking about this, I don't think you can teach it. Mm. I don't know if it's genetic and it's epigenetics that turns us on. I don't know that you can teach it. Um, I think that it's been built into us as humans because when that cherry was growing on that tree, if I picked it right now and I ate it, that was good for me. Mm. And there was no point in yeah. not picking it. Waiting till it's much. Right, because there was limited resources and if I didn't take them in now, right, um, so I, it is hard because for me to tell you, well, invest your money because someday that'll be, you'll be so glad you did. Well, maybe you won't. Maybe the investment won't turn out or maybe it would have been better for you to, to buy a boat right now and do something like. Or what if I die right before? Right, exactly. like, I mean, I don't put money in it. Right. Or a decent question is someone was like, yeah, um, this, uh, I had a really close friend who and just invested in Tesla and it went up so much they could have bought one, but they just kept investing. I'm like, but what if buying a Tesla was a safer vehicle and that safer vehicle saved them in a car crash from losing their legs? Right. It's like. That's another weird way of spending money is spending money now for safety. Okay, but or see what you did, yeah. which is so important. You critically ask questions. And if a kid with an Oreo in front of him actually st stopped for a second and said, hey, what did he say? If I wait, I get a second one. Yeah. Is that what I'd like? Would that be good? Yeah, 20 grams of sugar. That's some inflammation. My knees might know. <laughs> what if it's, they are critically thinking? I think it's the thinking part that keeps them from delaying the gratification. I mm -hmm. think there's not much thinking going on. So do you world. think some people think, can you think less? Like, do you have times in your life when you do think less or like? Sure. I mean, if you, if you haven't used that muscle, if you haven't used that critical thinking part of your brain, mm -hmm. it's a skill like any other. And I think you just, you're not a very, you don't think. Yeah. Most people don't think. It's funny. And I don't, this, they might have to edit this out, but ex an example is like, I never consume marijuana, even though it's legal because it makes me think too much. Hmm. Whereas I'm like, to some aspect, I'm like, is it a muscle? Like you can overthink. Like, I mean, we're sitting here. I'm very present in the conversation when, you know, Terry uh, was in here is asking, what's it going to be about? I'm like, you can't plan a conversation. Right. Everything you're saying, I'm trying to. Well, you are it. leading the conversation, though. I mean, you're you are bringing it to places you want to go to. I've noticed in my regular life, people are stop interviewing me. And I'm like, oh, my God, do I just talk like that now? <laughs> Whereas I, mean, I think you're kind of leading because I'm basing everything I say off of what you're saying in a way like you're kind of leading it as well, you yeah. know? So I think that's the beauty of conversation. Yeah, that's the beauty. They go in places you can't yes. predict. I mean, yes. and I think again, to thinking people's minds, that's really stimulating because it's mm -hmm. like, I have no idea where this is going. Mm -hmm. right. And the one time I did try to pigeonhole in, like, I'm like, you know, I really right. like the, um, and you know, it relates to you. It felt kind of awkward. You really, mm -hmm. the more you try to plan questions or plan sure. stuff, it just, it just messes with the, it's like a zoom. It's like you're right. artificially creating a zoom, even though you're in person. That's interesting. I didn't feel it was awkward, but I mean, yeah. but, uh, but getting yeah. better at it. Yeah. Call yeah. me in 300 weeks. <laughs> Six right, years. it's a skill. I mean, you've been doing this for what? How many weeks now? I go on and off. When I, uh, you know, right before we got hired at Arkimoto, I would do an hour-long episode every other day, and half of them were people who I've met once. Mm -hmm. Some of them were people I've never met. I just Facebook messages them, friend mm -hmm. of a friend. They'd come to my house, mm -hmm. and within 15 minutes, we'd be recording. And by the end, we'd just be like, "Yeah, we're friends now." That was my whole goal. Is how fast can I make friends publicly and get people to loosen up and relax? It yeah. was just a game. I never marketed it mm -hmm. whatsoever. I'm like, I don't care. If you... right. But just the fact of like, okay, if I invited the, um, the head of the physics department or psychology department at the UFO, they would never just sit down and meet with me for an hour, hmm. especially not if there's not food or anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But as soon as I'm like, there would be a microphone in front right. of me. They're it like, just, yes, right. yes, 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 twice. I'll come on. <laughs> right. And so you built that skill. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to learn how to reach out to people. Yeah. I wanted to learn how to uh, make friends quickly. And yeah. you, you can't iterate in the world because, like you said, people right. aren't used to it. It feels awkward. But everyone, a lot of people listen to a podcast and are like, yes, I you will play that role. By the way, you're really good at this because do you? how many times have you brought back things? Have you gone back around? You said this, Zach. Like, that is a skill that you have. It's very rare and you have it. I pre keep in mind, I did stay up all night working on ads. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not, but sometimes, I don't know. So when you say you stay up till 3 a.m. Googling stuff, do you actually stay? Do you ever do all night? I find there's a certain sleepiness mm -hmm. that is actually clarity. When I, I'm way. a songwriter, and when I written some of my best stuff, it's been late at night. When I think that part of your brain that automatically edits you yeah. is asleep or tired. Yeah, there's there's something about 
just get it out and edit it later. That's a, should be a different role. So yeah. I love making ads really late at mm -hmm. night or the next day. I'm just like, great yeah. decision, great decision. And yeah. I'll go back the next sure. day, well rested. But yeah. I'm like, you, you just got yeah, to You need off. to shut off that voice that you immediately really is trying to limit you before you, you get it out. So now you're saying you have to think less. <laughs> um, when you're being creative, so creativity is a completely different thing, I think. Mm -hmm. um, when you're trying to be creative, uh, you have to be in a in a positive creative environment and positivity is the word yes and the mm -hmm. hard part when you're working with two people is you know tell me something just tell me something uh you know juice is really tasty no, too much sugar no, yeah no. <laughs> right <laughs> that's that's the end of that conversation right yeah, as soon is. as i negate you, you you're just oh like there's nothing left right um whereas if you tell me that i'm like yes what yes what tell me yeah 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 yes yeah. and what right exactly. my joke for a long time was on right. no but instead of yes and right know? as soon as you hear that word no for anything you're trying to be creative about mm -hmm. that stops and most people don't know that if they just knew that i mean that's why comedians can work well together because they know the rules right they know that it's yes and um and then everything keeps going um, that's why conversations like this can go an hour and 10 right. minutes right whereas some people not even like arkimoto my personal podcast I'm 30 minutes in and I'm looking over at Kenzie and like kicking her leg. I'm like, can you please ask a question? Right. It's a skill. <laughs> yeah. So even if you're talking to a very interesting person, it can be hard to get stuff out because if they're not good at that skill, Takes they're like, I've never spent this long talking to anyone before. Right. I know. Yeah. And it's, or if it is, it's just their life, life partner. Like right. aside from your family and maybe a friend who in your, and maybe you're different than the average person. Who do you talk to for an hour? Like we just did without eating, looking at our phones once that, Aside from Kenzie, right. maybe occasionally one or two friends. Right. That never happens. That's why I started the show. I felt hungry. There you go. Mentally. I mean, really good point. There's no phones here. Yeah. Right? Um, how, and, you know, <laughs> it's really hard for us to, like, what we just did, spending an hour not looking at our phones, for a lot of people, like, how, wait, couldn't have important things. I shut off my phone to talk to you. Um, so, yeah, there could be earth shattering news or something, <laughs> right? Um, because I lived in a time before phones. The four phones mm -hmm. uh, when there, nothing happened yeah. that we knew about, right? And now we all think that in every two seconds we have to know everything. I think, I think we're going to learn that's just too much information. Like, I don't think our brains can handle it. I really am both sides because I love TikTok and Twitter and stuff. Sure. I, I, someone may have said part of it, but it's like Twitter's making, like our thoughts are becoming tweetable. Our music's becoming TikTokable and our like vision of aesthetics is becoming Instagramable. Everything needs to fit into these apps. I'm like, I think that's really toxic because you need to be able to think, think out so. of what fits in a four by five or a one by one ratio on like a right, 15 I mean, second the, song. The show we do every week is an hour long and we don't have breaking news. Like I don't like mm. it because uh, when you get that thing in your phone, it's like breaking news. Mm -hmm. I like to have a couple days to think about it and to put it into context. And I, breaking news is great, but I think that um, we're all just been trained now that if it's not breaking news, it's not the latest news. And it's like, well, okay, but what does that mean? The best stuff is timeless. Right. If the information you're feeding people or the information I'm receiving right. is time-based, right. I devalue it personally. Yeah. I'm like, well, yep. if it doesn't matter tomorrow, right. why it doesn't matter to me today, you right. know? Exactly. So I think that must be really empowering for you to realize there's a fan base of thousands of people who are your Patreons and 100,000 people who are just so interested yep. in that. Like, I mean, so when someone recognizes you, you're not like, oh, you know, I'm just trying to get groceries. Like, you have an audience of people who you really, like, you didn't have a producer telling you what lines to say. Right. Do you really connect with those people or do you have this facade where they think they know you, mm, but you really don't, you question, know, right. What's it, I, I'm not famous. What's it kind of like? You I know? think because we're on air for an over, I mean, we have multiple shows. We have 1200 videos that are like an hour long. Um, I think you do get to know me because like I not only report the news, but I tell you how I feel. So I think when people are like, well, there's Zach, I think they do know me pretty well. I mm -hmm. um, probably spend more hours with them than many people I know. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's really cool. Um, whereas if I was just like a Instagrammer and you're seeing pictures of me, then yeah, I don't think you know Zach, mm -hmm. but I, yeah, I think a lot of people do kind of know me and it, that's really cool because it lets me, if Mark thinks he knows me, mm -hmm. like today when I saw him and I saw his house, I'd seen, I'd never been to his house, but I'd been to his house on YouTube mm -hmm. and it felt like my house. Like that's pretty cool that I felt like I knew him. He's played music on his porch. I saw that. I felt like I knew him. That is pretty cool that I knew him that well without so you respect that there. you respect that part of people that yeah. they think i mean a lot of celebrities are like oh you you think you know me just because you heard a song like you know right. these famous musicians and i'm like Whoa. well but yeah so there you go i mean yeah. like if i get on stage and do a show for you as a musician or something it, it could be very personal or it could also be very showy right mm -hmm. it might be just entertaining you and so 
you leave at the end of the day and you're like, do I really know him? I mean, I know the lyrics and stuff, but like, do I really know him? When you're doing uh, something like Mark playing music on his porch or talking to you about his company, you do really get to know that person. You get to see their passions and all that. So that's really, I, I think, an amazing part of you too. You mentioned his name earlier and obviously I met him and I was a big fan. Got I have his mic. So you're sitting on Capisco. That was the chair he used. Do you think you know Joe Rogan? Yeah, I mean, I think after hundreds of hours of watching, we know a big side of him. We get to, and those little tidbits that you get, you know, like the other day I learned that he didn't know what chemicals were put on his lawn. And I was like, Joe, you know, come on, dude. You get $200 million. I think you should know what chemicals go on your lawn. And that's, I think, yeah, we, I think we get to know quite a bit about Joe Rogan, to be honest. But then if, like, I mean, when I went up and met the only things I said to him pretty much were like, thank you for what you're doing in terms of promoting long form conversation. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. It's helped me tremendously. Because, because you're a nice so person. It would be so one-sided if I started to be like a conversation exactly. with him. Exactly. You're like, a really nice person. And so you were being very gracious to him. <laughs> Instead of saying, I, I want you to spend some time on me, you were just telling him some things that would make him feel good about what he does for you. So that was that shows what a nice person you are. It's something I've really, really I'm almost welling up now is um, I have this theory on why people cry. And maybe it's just me. Maybe it's like uh, thinking in terms of that is like. I was welling up a little too. Yeah. yeah. What I've noticed is when you can't, communicate your feelings so it, whether it's time's not a factor like the person's dead now you can mm. never tell them that mm. you cry or you have so many thoughts running so fast wow that's really yeah nobody's ever corroborated it yeah. but i've like really looked internally because i'll like I just cry right. talking about anything yeah. yeah and i've always noticed it's i don't feel like i can properly communicate with people that's sometimes. really interesting i think you really hit on something there yeah <sighs> powerful yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can end on that except for i i have to hear that end of question I'm 25 year old you and the, you know, the crazy theory that we're all a consciousness reliving different, you know, mm -hmm. give it, let's lend it some credence. What advice would you give 25 year old self? And this is me being selfish of the sure. signal and noise. What could I gather from you to live a healthier, happier life? Look for special people. It's not the number. It's, it's the quality of the people in your life and hold on to them dearly. I love that. Thank you very much for coming. This is one of the most, this is almost like my personal podcast. You know, it's, we touched on Arkimoto. Happy and proud to have it on Arkimoto. The lawyers better not cut any of it. It's going <laughs> to my personal podcast. Thank you so much. Yes. This is a really fun time. It was a true joy. It. Thank you very much. I hope to see you back here soon. Thank you.